Oh, good evening. I am Sir Gareth Pelt, and welcome once again to Misty Dawn, the found episodes. In our third installment of the 78 existing episodes of Misty Dawn, we take a gander at episode 25, which aired October the 21st, 1965. Now, over the last nine episodes, Ricky Childress has been jailed for the murder of Chief Hutchinson and the disappearance of Sonny Vale. Potter Childress delayed the oil merger with the Austin and Houston families. Little Jake is still in a vegetative state after having been caught playing in Barabbas's lair. Nancy Childress and Butch Bedford are still hot and heavy, and Frisco Childress continues to feel threatened by strange omens. Decatur Childress still wants Barabbas, and Barabbas well. Barabbas has finally ensnared the object of his desire, Sunny Vale. So, everything is pretty much as we left it in the town of Misty Dawn, Texas. So sit, dear viewers, and enjoy Misty Dawn, episode 25. to get out of here. I can't convince anyone that I didn't kill Chief Hutchinson or kidnap Sonny. What am I going to do? Mama and Potter have pulled every string to bail me out, but the judge won't have it. He thinks I'm a flight risk. I've got to escape so I can find Sonny and prove who killed Chief Hutchinson. But how? Acting Chief Carter watches me like a hawk. Maybe it's because of his bad eye. Some days he watches me like a falcon, while other days he watches me like an egret. I've got to figure out a way out. Come on, Ricky, think! Think! Oops. Better keep it down. Here comes Acting Chief Carter. Shh! Shut up! Ricky, shh! Shut up! Out of there, Mr. Childress! I've got your lunch here. Oh, nice and hot. Hmm. I think Virgie Beth might have left a hair in your soup. I'll just take care of that. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> no problem, Mr. Childress. Nothing's too good for the Childress family. Your mother and father were always good to my family. Helped us during the Depression. I was just a little sprout back then, but I remember. Yeah, your father let us stay in the little outhouse on the back 40. Sure, there were six of us, but at least we had shelter. I wish we were talking under better circumstances, what with you killing Chief Hutchinson and kidnapping Miss Vale. I didn't kill Chief Hutchinson, and I didn't kidnap Sonny. Yeah, the Carter family owes a lot to the Childress family. So let me go, let me prove my innocence. Oh, come on, Mr. Childress, I can't do that. You're a murderer. <laughs> no, I'm not. Sure you are, everyone says so. Now, if you need anything, you just give me a holler, okay? Acting chief of police. My job is never done. Hey, Virgie Beth! Set up the checkerboard! <laughs> Gotta think of a way out of here. Potter, Mama. Ricky. Hey, little brother. How the screws straighten you? I'm okay. Were you able to make bail for me? 
she know that judge's gavel's tighter than a buck's horn. So it's no then. I'm sorry, Ricky. We've tried everything. Mama's right. I've tried bribing the judge, bribing the jury, and bribing the mayor. And no one's taking it. How's the merger coming? I'm on my way there now. I reckon nine days is enough to make Sam Austin and Jack Houston wait. We've done everything we can, Ricky. I know. Although we probably could have done more. What do you mean? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Just know we're doing everything we can. Oh, Mama. Whiskey. Mama! You dropped this extremely large file. <laughs> Silly me. Oh, don't you worry about a thing, little brother. As soon as this merger goes through, we're gonna be sitting in high cotton. Well, more so than we already are. <laughs> and then we'll have enough money to get you out of here. Thanks, Potter. Bye, Mama. Mama, Mama you... You dropped your gun. Oh, for the love of... Don't want to lose that. You might need it. Come on, Mama. Let's get out of here so we can make enough money to buy Ricky's freedom. All right. Goodbye, Ricky. Mama! I know. I dropped the keys to the cell. I gotta think of a way out of here. Should I lighten your spirits? I'm not hungry. Oh, but you need your strength. What am I saving it for? Oh, here we go. Ah! Oh, come on! Can't be that bad. Let's try it again. Ah! Too much bat fang? No, you ignoramus. It's too hot. Oh, sorry. You didn't answer me. What am I saving my strength for? Well, for tonight. What happens tonight? Tonight, you become Barabbas's bride. Still too hot? No. What do you mean, I'm going to become his bride? Oh, you and Barabbas is getting hitched tonight. You become Countess Childress. But I don't want to be Countess Childress. Oh, sure you do. No, I don't. Sure you do. Who's performing the ceremony? Oh, Barabbas will be doing that himself. How can he be the groom and perform the ceremony himself? Hmm. Well, you see, it's not really a regular kind of ceremony. No? No, no, no. Barabbas will dress you up real nice like, bite you in the neck, drain most of your blood, take you back to his coffin, and then you'll rise up again and kill people as a couple. No! Well, what? It still can't be hot. No, I mean... I, oh, too much bat fang. I knew it. No, I mean I don't want to be his bride. Well, why not? It's got great benefits. Oh, yeah. I, I get to get my blood drained. And sleep in a coffin, lose my soul, and only get to go out at night. Nah, them's just the perks. You get to change into a dog and a bat, too, whenever you want. Oh, good. Yeah, you get to fly across the Texas Ocean, skip across the Dallas Bluffs, and see Beaumont from high atop the Houston mountain range. But I don't care about any of that. I want to be the wife of a man who loves me and cherishes me. Not someone who wants to bite me and throw me into a coffin. No, you'll see things in a different light. Well, not the sunlight, that is. It burned you to a crisp. Kaka, you have to help me get out of here. I can't. You've got no right to ask me to do that. He'd kill me. But I'd be free. And I'd be dead. Kaka, hmm? all you have to do is let me go, and then we can be together. As lovers? I still can't do it! He'd find me. He's found me before. And you don't want to see what Barabbas is like when he's angry. As opposed to what he's like when he loves someone. I can't do it! Look, 
You're just gonna have to resign yourself to the fact that it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I've got to go, you know, prepare. No, don't go. I have to, I'm sorry. Please don't leave me. No, come back. You just don't understand, Miss Vale. Don't leave me. Oh, sure, Cal, you know, it's the way it goes. That's, you know, you always see that all the time, but, you know, I got all this under control. Well, yeah, I do. Well, sure I do. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Hang on a second. What is it, darling? Mr. Austin and Mr. Houston are here. Hang on a minute. All right, Darla, send him in. Hey, Cal, I gotta go. Austin and Houston are here. Yeah, say howdy to the missus for me, would you? She'll remember me. <laughs> What's that? Uh, no, no, we never met. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, you're another one. Bye bye. Mr. Austin and Mr. Houston are here. Thank you, Darla. No, thank you. Enough with the niceties, butter. Yeah, let's get down to business. You've kept us waiting long enough. Business? We have business, gentlemen? Come off it. Let's get this merger done so we can own 51% of all the oil in Texas. <laughs> oh, there must be some sort of mistake, Sam. Mistake? What mistake? Enough, Potter. Stop kidding around. The merger, Potter. Yeah. The merger! Oh, the merger. Well, the merger's already taken place, boys. What the devil are you talking about? What I'm talking about is that Childress Oil already owns 51% of all the oil wells in Texas. What do you mean you own 51% of the oil wells in Texas? <sighs> Did I say 51%? What I meant to say is that Childress Oil already owns 66% of all the oil wells in Texas. 66%? How? Our free companies own 17% apiece. That makes 51%. Well, took me nine days to do it, but I just bought up Hearst Oil, Euless Oil, Blankenship Oil, and Qualls Oil. Between us all, we had 66%. You rotten! Looks like it's over, fellas. Children's Oil's gonna run the show from now on. Maybe you can... Oh, I don't know change my oil sometime. <laughs> I'm gonna run you piddly little 34% into the ground. Pretty soon I'm on it all, boys. Every last well. 100 by gosh percent. I don't believe it. Those companies know what kind of person you are. I can't believe it. Chance Hearst, Claude Ulyss, and Billy Jack Qualls would ever sell out to you. Believe it, Sam. How'd you get them to do it? Well, they didn't have much of a choice. You see, 
It's not what you have to give them. It's what you have to take away from them that counts. I don't get you. He blackmailed them. Oh, blackmail, such a harsh word, Sam. Person being blackmailed gets absolutely nothing out of the deal. Where I, well, I paid them handsomely. How? Well, I gave them the opportunity to save on alimony and to possibly stay out of jail. So you did blackmail them. You evil. Easy there, fellas. I don't want to have to shoot you. I'd rather see you both do it to yourselves. Goodbye, fellas. You know, I'd like to say that was nothing personal, but we'd all know I was lying. I'll get you for this, Potter. I swear. <clears throat> and if he doesn't, I will. Wow. <clears throat> Good luck, gentlemen. You're going to need it. This isn't over. Darla? Bring in your notepad. Note, notepad? The yellow thing with the lines going across. <gasps> oh, yeah! Oh, oh, okay. Do me a favor. Put on something sexy. <laughs> What's taking him so long? Who? Dr. Waco, Nancy. Who's he? Nancy, he's been the family doctor for years. Who? Dr. Waco. He's... How's little Jake, Dr. Waco? Well, he's no better off than he was yesterday or five weeks ago. He's still in a vegetative state of shock. You know, sometimes I look at him and I see something there. And then at the same time, nobody's at home. It puzzles me, Frisco. It puzzles me. Something strange is happening in Misty Dawn, Doctor. Speaking of, has anybody heard anything from Miss Sunnyvale? No, nothing at all. It's as if she's vanished off the face of the earth. Exactly. How's Ricky? As well as can be expected, I suppose. I can't believe Sunny and I have never met. You've never met Miss Vale? Nope. Oh, I keep forgetting. Enough said. Can we see little Jake? Yes, can we see him now, Doctor? Well, I don't know what good it'll do. But what bothers me the most is neither Potter nor Decatur spent any time with him. Well, any explanation? No, none at all. Don't look at me. Can we see him now, Dr. Waco? Well, I suppose, but just don't excite him. Thank you. Frisco speaking. I mean Nancy, your brother. Sister. Sister. Aunt, can you hear us, little Jake? Can you hear us? Uh... Mother asked you a question, little nephew. You need to answer her, little Jake. Mother's talking to you. Answer her. Answer, I'll pull your tongue out of your head. Answer me, do you hear? Answer her. Nancy, mother. please. Well, he's being stubborn. Answer her. Answer her. You, you have, have to be more gentle. Like this. Please say something. Please say something or Grandma will pull the tongue out of your head. See? Not like this! Like this. Like this? Yes. Not like this. Yes. Not like this. Correct. <laughs> Can't you see Mother and I are talking? Uh, wait a minute, he said something. Coffin. Coffin. 
What did he say? I don't know. I think he said something about someone coughing. Who's coughing, dear? Kaka. Kaka. Honestly, he's got his mother's fresh mouth. I think he's saying something else. What is it? Shh. Can listen. Barabbas. Barabbas. Vampire. Vampire. Someone sat on this furniture. Well, hello, Dr. Waco. Water. What are you doing here? Well, if you haven't noticed, little Jake is upstairs in a state of shock. Who? Your son. Oh, him. Well, how's he doing? Well, he's babbling, but at least he's babbling. What you saying? He said something about an umpire on Yogi Berra's bus was coughing. <laughs> Sounds like babbling to me. <laughs> what's Miss Del Rio making for dinner? For the love of... Potter, don't you know what's going on in this town? There's been murders, kidnappings, even some that your own brother has been incarcerated for. Where's your caring, your concern? Look, Doc, I've been too busy making sugar soil the biggest oil company in Texas. I don't have time for every piddly little malady that comes along. Piddly? Ugh! Frisco, I'm going to have to leave before I say something I'm going to regret. I'll see myself out. Nancy? Potter? <laughs> my, my, he sure is touchy today, isn't he? Potter, why can't you show concern for other people's feelings? Oh, Mama, I'm too busy being rich to have feelings. Where's Decatur? I don't know. I didn't see her today. Hmm. Then where's Miss Del Rio? She's... Oops, that must be Butch. Butch? Butch Bedford? Yes, Butch Bedford. Oh, I swear, Mama, I do not know what she sees in that Bedford kid. Oh, she's 18. She's going through a rebellious phase. Yeah, but a Bedford. Well, well, speaking of the white trash himself. Hello, Butch. What's your mouth, Potter? I might just shut it for you. Oh, what are you going to do? Plot trash me to death? <laughs> Give me a hard time, Daddy O. Butch is a rebel. <laughs> He's as much a rebel as I'm from Poorville. Ooh, sorry, that hit a little close to home there, Butch. That's it. <laughs> you hit me and I find out about Please, it. Please, boys. Sorry, Mr. Childress. Nancy's right. I am a rebel. I don't take guff from an old geezer like your son. Come on, Chief. Why do you do that, Potter? How do you make him feel like dirt? Well, that's exactly what he is, Mama. Dirt. The sun's going down. Soon Count Childress will be here. Is this the last time I'll be able to see the sun? Are these my last hours as a mortal? I have to get out of here. Where are you, Ricky? Why aren't you here? Oh, no. The sun's going down now. It's... He's coming. What do I do? What can I do? I'm doomed. Doomed. Hello, my dear. Please, don't hurt me. <laughs> I have no intention of hurting you. In fact, quite to the contrary. You'll never be hurt again. You'll never feel pain again, and you'll live, live forever. Kaka, never interrupt me again. Do you understand? I understand.
You're going to be my bride, my dear. I suppose me not wanting to be your bride doesn't even come into the picture, does it? Not really, no. You see, I've waited an eternity for the perfect bride. I thought I had one once, but sadly, it didn't work out. Why? It was on a dark, moonless night. She and I were about to begin our wedding ceremony when a strange, deadly turn of events interceded and changed everything I longed for, everything I yearned for. What happened? Did she leave you? Nope. I killed her. You killed her? Why? Ah, enough of this inane batter. It's time. The door. Kaka, see who it is. just now. Well? I'm doing all right. You know, no, you little... idiots. Tell him I'm here. Oh. Come in. Sit down. I'll uh, go and tell him that you're here. Take any time. Touch of the um... No, you festering imbecile. Who is it? Decatur Childress. What does she want? Take a wild guess. I don't have to. Help! Mrs. Childress! Quiet, you fool. Put the dress on. I'll take care of Mrs. Childress. No, on her. I don't want to hear a peep out. Understood. Understood. Cousin-in-law, to what do I owe this unexpected yet pleasant visitation? Hello, Barabbas. I wonder when they're going to bring that back. What brings you out on a night like tonight? Oh, I love 
love what you've done with the place. Why don't you show me around? <laughs> I'd love to. It's just that I'm a tad busy at the moment. Too busy? For itty? Bitty? Peter? Uh, well, uh... Am I getting your blood up? Oh, yeah. I, I, um, I have a few things to finish up in the basement. Uh, why don't you make yourself a drink? Oh, that sounds just marvy. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Stop biting his hand. She ain't biting it, she's licking it. Oh. Oh. Keep her quiet. I can't. Miss Vale, stop licking his hand. She ain't licking it, she's biting it now. Take her to the secret corridor so the Cater Childress will tear her. Okay, I'll get rid of her as quick as I can. Don't let her get away. Forgive me. <laughs> Just a little trouble with caca. What can you do with caca? <laughs> <laughs> what indeed? Come. <coughs> Sit next to Decatur. Yes, well, I <laughs> really Sit. should. You know, Potter doesn't... How can I say this? Please, I, I understand. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to be a children's wife? Uh, Do you? No, uh, actually I haven't had the ex um, uh, Oh my, look at the time. <laughs> yes, I really have to be- Do you know what it's like to be lonely? Do you know what it's like to be lonely? Yes, well, actually I do. You see, it's very, very difficult. I do everything to get attention. Everything. I wear a shorter dress. I wear greener mascara. Nothing works. Nothing. Here. Smell this. <laughs> I really shouldn't. <laughs> Come on. Smell it. I bought this perfume yesterday. It drives men. <laughs> Oh, Ain't it really what a sister? <laughs> Come on, one big snoopful. <laughs> I barely put a dab on my revealing, sensual, pulsating. <laughs> Come on, let go. Yes.
you have it. Episode 25. When it aired October the 21st, 1965. It was deemed quite racy. A woman putting her hand on a gentleman's knee just wasn't seen in those times. Critics also claimed that Barabbas's fangs simulated an and his attempt to bite Decatur directly alluded to s <coughs> to which Carl Bock Springs, owner and president of the TBQ, filed back, How come y'all did about the other brawls he bit? Indeed. Hmm. So, until next time, gentle viewers, I'm Sir Gareth Pelt. Thank you, and pleasant dreams. <laughs> that ought to hold the This has been a TVQ presentation.